Good evening and welcome to Combating Corruption, your weekly current affairs program that focuses on all things relating to corruption. We do employ you to be part of the conversation. Get a hold of us on our social media platforms at ZBC News Online. And today, unpacking issues around corruption in the local authorities and also concerns around compliance and system reviews. I'm currently joined in studio uh, from uh, the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe. It's a president, uh, Mr. Abel uh, Matsika. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for us. And uh, also joining us are from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, Commissioner Mlobane, who's in charge of uh, uh, compliance and as well, who's more in line with the compliance and uh, systems reviews, and will be able to give us a, a bit of an appreciation of how the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission's engagements have been uh, so far. Commissioner Mlobane, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, I guess my first question will be targeted uh, towards um, uh, uh, President Matsika for the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe. When it comes to being able to appreciate not only the history, uh, relevance, and uh, significance towards urban development in Zimbabwe, uh, give us an appreciation of the Urban Council of uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah, uh, uh, Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe is made up of local authorities within the urban setup. Mm -hmm. We are 32. Uh, local authorities in Yukas. Uh, it's uh, Yukas dates back long, long, long back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are just continuing uh, with the mandate that it has had for a long time. Right. Now look at the mandate that, it's had, that it has had for a long time. Uh, internally, administratively, I know that uh, from I think about 1998, um, uh, you went through a few administrative changes. But more importantly, uh, its constitution only having been uh, re-looked at in 2020, uh, as a result of the decentralization component brought in at a national level. Tell us a bit about uh, um, the association's own uh, um, insurance of meeting uh, compliance with the times as it progresses, looking very closely at its mandate. Uh, compliance uh, issues, we, 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 as, uh, as UCAS, we focus much uh, on making sure that all the statutories that we are supposed to adhere to be the, the, the Urban Councils Act, be the Constitution of Zimbabwe, we really comply. And Zaki is coming in now, uh, uh, checking on the systems that are there. Right. Talk Looking about Zach coming in right now. Commissioner yes. Mlobene, tell us a bit about how exactly uh, you have gone so far to engage uh, urban and uh, local councils. Uh, thank you very much. Our engagement with local authorities uh, started in 2020. Uh, when we sent out a questionnaire, a survey, when we conducted a survey among the 92 local authorities to establish whether or not they had systems that would prevent uh, corruption. Uh, we, with the specific questions that we asked them to find out in terms of corporate governance to establish whether corporate governance was strong enough to prevent uh, certain corrupt practices. And the result um, of the questionnaire was that we established that there were a number of policies that were missing in their toolkit. And we then for developed a prevention of corruption toolkit, which we then used to as a guard, as a measure, to find out how compliant uh, they were towards uh, preventing corruption. And then in 2021, last year, uh, we engaged all the 92 uh, local authorities. We met with the internal auditors. Uh, we met we first we met with the internal auditors from uh, rural district councils and then we then met afterwards we met with the uh, internal auditors from the urban councils it was our engagement with the internal auditors that we established a number of issues uh, first we established that internal auditors were being victimized in local authorities uh, they were, some of them were not even given the tools of trade they were not treated as well because of the fact that in most cases their reports were damning towards uh, management and therefore we felt that it was opportune time uh, to then right. introduce right. an alternative which would be the integrity committee. I do want to pick up on a point, uh, uh, Mr. Matsika, on uh, Commissioner Mlobane's uh, sentiments around um, uh, internal auditors being victimized. Now, 
um, uh, 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 entities such as urban councils, um, local authorities rather, do have their own internal um, mechanisms to operate by. Now, when an internal audit is taking place and you find that you're victimized and intimidated, to the best of your understanding, what has contributed, what did contribute rather, uh, towards such circumstances prevailing? It's unfortunate that I'm hearing that uh, for the first time. We've been interacting with our auditors, uh, our internal auditors, for quite some time and we never had uh, such an issue being raised where they are victimized. We've been working with them very well, and they are the contact persons, even when ex external auditors come. So uh, it's the first time I'm hearing that they are being victimized. Mm -hmm. Isn't that where the cause of concern comes in, Commissioner Mlovane, that uh, uh, to some degree this disconnect in terms of uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission's engagement of uh, irregular practices and then also uh, uh, disinformation uh, being highlighted around uh, their inability uh, to administer those practices? How then would you respond uh, uh, to uh, Mr. Matsika's sentiment? Yeah, uh, w the internal auditors, yes, we engaged them and they informed us because we wanted to know where were the internal auditors when the Auditor General's recommendations were not being implemented. Right. And the responses we got uh, from the internal auditors, not just from urban councils only, no, we actually met uh, internal auditors from 144 public institutions and the sentiments were the same right across that they were being victimized, particularly because uh, most of them are whistleblowers because mm -hmm. the, uh, even the Auditor General relies to some extent on the reports of the internal auditors. Mm -hmm. So they were indicating victimization and victimization uh, by the way isn't just direct in some cases is that an internal auditor particularly one council one urban council in, or internal auditor informed us that he was the only one who didn't even get the tools of trade didn't even get a, 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 when others got laptops and also when they got um, uh, iPads, he didn't get any because of being an internal auditor. And in some cases, they, if, some of them said even for them to attend the workshop, the workshop that we called them, it was really a struggle right. because of their position. Right. I'm, I'm so glad that you do raise up those pertinent points there, Commissioner, but I do want to bring in uh, 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 Mr. Matsika. When one looks at the current state of urban councils within Zimbabwe, we cannot uh, consider that corruption does not take place. It clearly does. To the best of your knowledge, what has contributed towards uh, the sporadic uh, uh, increase in corrupt activity with local councils? Corruption is uh, existent in local authorities uh, like uh, we have noticed through the arrests uh, and cases that are under investigations. And um, if we look at it, there could be quite a number of uh, issues that were even identified by Zach when they were checking on the systems. And one of them is really lack of uh, systems or laxity. But Mr. Masinga, I'd like systems. to know from your part, from your internal structures within the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe, what have been your findings that contribute towards the increase in corrupt activity taking place in the councils? I acknowledge that the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission will give us their report in due course, but just from your own internal measures, what have you discovered? It's the systems that are not tight. We just need to tighten up the systems. Right. Yes. And, 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 I'm, and I really appreciate you being able to be honest enough to share that because that gets back to where Commissioner of Lobani then comes in. There is a difficulty in being able to address the systems that are currently in place. It, it does seem as though that either the systems are rather redundant or that they need to be revamped. And I'd love to hear in terms of your investigations, uh, Commissioner, how you feel best the issue of failure to adopt systems within local councils can better be addressed. Yes. Uh, the areas that were found very prone to corruption or vulnerable, most vulnerable to corruption, are the areas of procurement, recruitment, and lack of implementation of the Auditor General's recommendations. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, procurement, um, most the, at the time when we did the compliance checks uh, last year, we established that a number of them did not even have a uh, procurement management units as required in the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act. And so through our recommendations, we recommended that 
all, all local authorities ensure that they have uh, PMUs, pro, pro, that's procurement management units, and that, that should be free from uh, interference by other departments. What was happening is that in other institutions, there was interference from other departments, interfering with the operations of the PMUs, and that but compromised the, the procurement right. systems. I, I see, uh, Mr. Matsuka, you're nodding your head there. What, what would your sentiments be towards us contributing towards that particular challenge? Yeah, it, it's, um, it has to do with lack of training, uh, lack of training in terms of procurement procedures, right. especially on the area of uh, procurement. But Mr. Matsika, then we get back to another concern that comes up is the competency of uh, those who then come in to be able to manage uh, a local authority's resources. I mean, like if you say that there's lack of training, then how do they find themselves within the appointment of such positions? Right, you see, when, when people get in, into employment, uh, they have qualifications, mm. obviously. So but if I could just, just hold you on that particular note, we'll get that response as soon as you come back from a break. Thank you so okay. much. We'll take a short break and be right back with more. Police, the police, guard the guard, chair the chair, chef the chef. Police, the police, guard the guard, chair the chair, chef the chef. Welcome back to Combating Corruption, your weekly current affairs program that focuses on all things relating to corruption. Today, we're taking a very close look at uh, local authorities and uh, the rampant increase uh, in uh, corruption. Joining me uh, from uh, the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe is his president, uh, Mr. Uh, Abel Matsika, and from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, Commissioner um, Lobane, whose main focus is on compliance and systems uh, reviews. And now, uh, let's get back to uh, the discussion that we're having, uh, Mr. Matsika. We're looking at uh, issues of redundancy and uh, uh, and uh, training capacity uh, that's a requirement that's required please uh, go for it yeah um, i'm saying people get into employment through qualifications mm. proper qualifications then they are given some tasks where they are perhaps if you look at the procurement issue it sure. the way we do it in this country might be different from how it is done elsewhere uh, perhaps different from the station somebody was working suppose he was working out of uh, uh, the country. So when they get uh, employment, procurement department, they need to adapt, they need to learn uh, what is expected of them, what are the prescriptions of the Procurement Act mm. of Zimbabwe, all those things. So right. they have to learn. It's a learning process. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, you go so far as to express uh, as much as you have, uh, Mr. Matsika, because Commissioner Mlobani, you can clearly tell that um, they, 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 there's, there's a rampant uh, inability for us to have capacitated individuals who are uh, running within the local authorities. Um, that seems to be where uh, the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe is focusing the problem on. Um, your findings in relation to that? In terms of procurement, um, the Pro Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act is a very comprehensive act and it compares favorably with other acts, similar acts uh, in the region and on the continent. We've yes. done a research on that. What we want to highlight is that as the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, we have actually proposed we are, or we are proposing uh, that all procuring entities, over 340 of them, um, that they need to have, in addition to using the Act, they need to develop procurement policies. Mm -hmm. In the procurement policy, it will then step, it will then indicate what needs to be done in terms of the relationship between management and the the, the board, in, or the other words, the council. Yeah. So what the procurement policy will then highlight is where the procurement uh, unit or PMU should report to so that there is element improved accountability. Mm -hmm. We're proposing that the procurement uh, unit PMU reports in terms of its reports to the finance committee so that the finance committee brings procurement issues, okay. procurement matters to the council mm -hmm. and to board the, the same thing. We're also, that's what we've been promoting in 2022 right. in, the, in our prevention of corruption toolkit. One of the policies that we've uh, proposed uh, to the institutions that we have so far worked with, which are over 50, 50 institutions so far that we have met with, were saying have a procurement policy. Mm -hmm. In the procurement policy, detail how the information will come to the council. For example, just as an example, one of the issues in the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act is the fact that there is a, an annual procurement plan which has to be submitted to PRAS a, a, by latest. 31st January of the following year. So we're saying let that procurement plan be submitted right. to the committee and de 
be deliberated right. by the council mm. so that they know exactly what needs to be purchased. Right. Now, on that particular note, Commissioner, thank you so much. If the annual procurement plan is mm -hmm. not brought forward mm -hmm. what then becomes the recourse to that local authority are they still are they then still just allowed to go forward and uh, and procure goods without having ensured that the annual procurement plan is available uh, Pras, just speaking on behalf of Pras, uh, Pras has reported that uh, compliance with the Act in totality mm -hmm. is around 63%. Yeah. It's not 100%. Mm -hmm. So not every mm -hmm. institution is compliant in terms of submitting their annual procurement plan mm -hmm. uh, to Pras. So mm -hmm. we have the issue of the fact that they might not have submitted their annual procurement plan to Pras. And then the second issue is that the governing body itself might not have had sight of the procurement plan. Right. Now, looking at some of the concerns that have been raised by Commissioner Mlova and Mr. Matsika, it seems as though that for city councils or, or for local authorities, rather, to be able to ensure that adequate service delivery is administered, how then can they do so without even being able to access the resources available to them through procurement plan initiatives? It's a tricky one, but we, we take on board uh, the suggestion and proposal that is coming from uh, Zach, having noticed uh, how lax the systems are in terms of procurement, yeah. we talk on we take on board. Um, is, is is this not where the challenge is, Mr. Matsika? That um, because the system, to some degree, is so lax that it is that which is taken advantage of to be able to embezzle funds, to misdirect funds, because you can't have the necessary apparatus put together, but the citizen we still require services. Water still needs to get cleaned, uh, roads still need to get fixed, but because you haven't put in a proper proposal, a proper plan, something comes out and we see this is where the leakages are coming from. Is that not the case? Yeah, it is. It is. And we are looking into that and taking on board the proposals that are being given. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I've also taken note of uh, the proposal that is be being given, and I would uh, perhaps propose that Zach have a thorough look at the Urban Councils Act mm -hmm. so that uh, whatever proposals that they have should dovetail into the Urban Councils Act. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we won't be found in sixes and sevens because in some instances they come to arrest us for having flouted the Urban Councils mm -hmm. Act. So I've heard they say uh, we, the, the procurement unit has to, has to report to the Finance Committee, then to Council. Mm -hmm. It's a good uh, proposal, but if you go to to the Urban Councils Act, it doesn't stipulate that. Uh, the Auditor General's findings. Continually, her findings have continued to show an inability of local authorities to manage funds appropriately. And it seems as though that local authorities have taken no heed to the Auditor General's findings, implying that they know better. Yet the citizenry continues to complain of a lack of service delivery. Your sentiments? Yes. Uh, just a quick one. Yes. A quick one. I want to avoid this one. Uh, just to let uh, a, a Councillor Matsika know that we, we are very much aware of the Urban Councils Act. I think we know it inside and out. So w w the thing is, there are so many legislations that you need to take note of. We have the Public Finance Management Act. You have the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Act. You also have a PECOC, which of course doesn't apply to them. But all this, and also there's the Criminal Codification Act, sections 170 to all the way to 174, which criminalize certain acts, and uh, including bribery, uh, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, concealment of a transaction, where you have a personal interest, concealing your interest from a principal, etc. So those are some of the things that we then take into account. So over and above what the Auditor General would have highlighted, Auditor General looks at the integrity of the financial statements, whether they reflect a true and fair view or not. And then the, she will give in her opinion in terms of those, uh, those uh, findings, in terms of her findings. What we have observed from the Auditor General's findings is that there is a, a gap in service mm. delivery. Mm. She points out issues of, fi of, of service delivery that uh, they are being shortchanged. Right. Mm -hmm. And it goes all back to planning, to in terms of planning in the procurement right. act, mm -hmm. in the procurement plan, right. where you don't plan to make sure you deliver services. That's it. I will get back to that particular note shortly. Thank you so much, the Commissioner Blumen. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back with the final segment of Combating Corruption. Stay tuned. Police, the police, guard the guard, chair the chair, chef the chef. Police, the police, guard the guard, Chair the chair, chef the chef. 
Welcome back to Combating Corruption, the final segment, of course, uh, uh, focusing on all things that are relating uh, to corruption. Feel free to engage with us on our social media platforms at ZBC News Online. Currently joined in studio today uh, by the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe President, uh, Mr. Abel Matsika, and from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, Commissioner Mloba. Now, uh, urban councils and their ancestors have failed to administer their role in terms of the findings by the Auditor General. Uh, continual findings continue to show a lack of compliance on the Auditor General's findings. Basically, it seems as though they're not being taken seriously. Um, I, I wouldn't agree. Uh, s since, you know, the, the, the Auditor General started their work uh, uh, s seriously in local authorities, there has been some improvements. Uh, if they visit the institution, for example, they make their findings, they call for an audit committee exit uh, meeting where councillors are appraised on issues that have been raised. And we have noticed through our councils that there is generally, you know, a reduction in number uh, in number of issues being raised by the Auditor General. But Mr. Mansika, one someone could argue that there's a reduction in the number because the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission keeps having to come to it, the local authorities when they are called. That's that's a, someone could argue that that's the reason. It seems as though that it's still having to be enforced by an anti-corruption body. Why aren't local authorities taking the Auditor General's findings seriously? Yeah, they are. They Internally, are. that is. Yes, they are. We are tightening uh, the systems. Uh, we are making sure that we adherence to the systems. Uh, Let's the look at it this way, yeah, Mr. Matsika, just to be able to also appreciate that I do understand you speak on behalf of urban councils. Yes. Um, but I also want to be able to be clear that you don't also hold a mandate to operate on all their behalfs. However, in being able to follow your mandate within an organization, which is a lobby, right, be it government, to ensure that there is compliance with all councils, despite where they are in the country. Why is that then not being done? And if that is being done, please explain to me how so. Yeah, that's uh, being done. It is being done. Uh, what local authorities are doing now, uh, they've set among us themselves a, 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 like uh, a club where local authorities uh, visit each other, advise each other, check on the systems, uh, compliance issues. So let's look then at what you improve. advise each other about the Auditor General's findings. What do you advise amongst yourselves about her findings? How how amongst yourselves do you decide to address the issue of her findings? Uh, we, we Generally, these are systems, and uh, systems are very, you know, they are not peculiar to a local authority. Mm -hmm. We encourage each member to make sure that this, they are dear. But, and the same systems that you highlighted earlier on are not efficient. The same systems that you highlight are not efficient are the ones that you continue to discuss and figure out how best to be able to address. Yeah, there, there, there's an improvement, like I said. There's mm -hmm. generally an improvement, and Zaki is complimenting, right. not that right. they are very Where much... Where would important. you say an improvement is taking place, Mr. Matsika? Yeah, we, we, we look at issues that perhaps were raised by the Auditor General right. in the past year. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the current report. Right. Okay. and you see that there's in, an improvement. Maybe That's how I, we measure. Right. Okay, okay, let's let's maybe zero it down. Let's get to Karoi more specifically. Mm -hmm. What would you say in Karoi has been a systematic compliance assimilation that has been taken in line with what the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission's position is, but more importantly, on the Auditor General's findings? Yeah, uh, the Auditor General, for Karoi in particular, raised quite a number of issues in the audits that that were done previously mm -hmm. we looked at them uh, most of them were pointing at the policies like she highlighted there were some policies that were missing some transport policies uh, some uh, uh, labor policies right. quite a number of policies then we had to make sure that those are in place and uh, that's how we have improved the, the system mm -hmm. yes right let's get into um, uh, the third area that you brought up uh, commissioner Mlobani. You brought up procurement concerns, Auditor General's findings, and recruitment. Yes. Expand there a bit for us. Yes. Uh, on recruitment, uh, it's a whole basket of human resources policies. We have found that um, some of the recruitment policies are also not very clear, uh, clearly documented. In particular, the Constitution requires that when you recruit, you recruit across the country. There should be no discrimination. But what we have found is that there is a tendency for 
people of a certain district only to be employed. In that way, it creates a cartel for corruption. Uh, so particularly one local authority was uh, actually quizzed by the Public Accounts Committee, the local authorities uh, committee, subcommittee. Uh, where they had recruited someone without necessarily advertising uh, across the country. So they, uh, that's what, one area that we found uh, where they are wanting in terms of their recruitment policy. Because uh, uh, then also we found that acting, acting and uh, allowances policy within the recruit within the HR policies is also there's also a gap there, which we then recommend that uh, they improve on that because there are some people who have been acting in certain positions, key positions for a very long time, and as a result they can't be held accountable. And also succession plans, succession policies are also not in place, and as a result uh, information is con contained with one person, mm -hmm. within one person, and so it's a problem when that, that person leaves. And so there have been vacancies in very senior right. positions for a very long time. So in, in recruitment, those are the issues mm -hmm. that we, we have brought up. And we've said, can you also make sure that your Human Resources uh, Committee has included in in the in their uh, charter uh, or terms of reference areas that will then reduce uh, co corruption in recruitment right mr matsika would you be of the opinion that uh, corrupt activity contributes towards the sabotage of uh, access to service delivery within any council yeah indeed the concerns that commission of lobani raises with the loopholes that come up around ensuring that there are inefficiencies by virtue of not filling in positions seems to speak to a manner in which contributes towards corrupt activity taking place. Since you agree, how are you addressing that particular issue? Yeah, um, that, that's the essence of this engagement with Zach. You know, councils have their policies, recruitment policies, and which are also peculiar to them. We don't have a standard recruitment policy in Zimbabwe where each and every uh, local authority maybe does something that is similar to the have other. Have you posed one? So, so, so if they have a recruitment policy that speaks to a specific area, then it, it becomes an issue. What is coming out uh, from what the commissioner is saying, I mean, indicates that we need to revisit our recruitment policy. Yes. Holistically. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, on that particular note, I would like to be able to at least uh, uh, get a final way forward. The biggest concern with local authorities are around service delivery. The citizenry's concerns is that their contribution towards uh, a, 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 a local authority revenue speaks to a service delivery that they're meant to receive. Um, there's been a loss of hope by a lot of people when it comes to being able to look at their local councils to be able to meet service delivery. What are your sentiments in that regard, but what sort of assurity can you give the general citizenry that this sort of recourse can be right? Right. Um, local authorities are part of the government, and we know our government is a vision 2030, where if we tolerate corruption, we will never get to vision 2030. So we are fighting corruption as a country, and local authorities are taking the lead. Thank you so much for your contribution. The Commission of Lobby, once again, thank you so much for joining us. But of course, if you just give us uh, your, your final uh, thoughts on uh, with regards uh, to the engagements of uh, compliance and systems reviews within the local authorities. What we want to do is to strengthen uh, corporate governance and we to make sure that there's improved service delivery and also that they have policies and structures that then allow them to combat corruption and that the policies that they already have within them, they review them and incorporate areas uh, that will prevent corruption, specifically that each local authority should have an anti-fraud and anti-corruption policy, which will then guide them as to how to respond against any breaches in terms of integrity. And of, of course, we encourage having an integrity strategy as well as integrity committees that will then ensure that everybody has is practicing mm -hmm. integrity as enshrined in the Constitution. I'd like to thank my guests in studio joining us from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Commissioner Mlobane, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And uh, also from the Urban Council Association of Zimbabwe, uh, Mr. Matsika, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. That's all that we had tonight. Pleasant view. Have a good night. Police the police. Guard the guard. Chair the chair. Chef the chef. Save the